What up beautiful humans, back once again with a useful, hopefully a useful YouTube video for you. I was thinking, just about to start this dog walk, and I was just thinking like, I've always had this um, desire, this drive, to be useful, <laughs> to be, whether that's coming from like, a place of wounding where I'm like, I feel like unless I'm being useful, then I don't deserve good things or I don't deserve attention or love or whatever. Just want to be useful. Like sometimes some of our best traits come from wounding. Um, like if I, if I don't feel like I'm being useful, then I'd, I'd get a bit uncomfortable. I feel like I should be doing something with my life. I feel like I should be helping someone somehow um, even if it means completely bypassing the, th the way I need to help myself sometimes anyway I like to be useful so I like to think that my videos are useful and t when I first started this channel years ago I was like oh my videos are useful because people tell me that they're inspiring and people get inspired to pick up a camera and find the beauty in life, you know? Which is another way of sort of thinking like, it's just looking for good stuff, staying positive. And because I was constantly looking for beautiful stuff in my life, I was finding lots of reasons to stay positive. And that was how I felt I was being useful in those videos and now, there, is, there are elements of that, but as I find myself now in a season of kind of like rest where I'm not doing this crazy travel and I look on the internet anyway and like see all these other people going to incredible locations with getting these incredible drone shots and it's all over Instagram. It's just bombarded with like incredible content that I would have, I can only dream of creating even in like the peak of my film career, you know. And so I'm like 36 years old, coming up to 37 years old in March. And I'm like resting. I no longer have like this need to like constantly be busy the whole time because I actually really got burnt out from that. So now I'm like in a season where I'm like just starting to feel into what it, what it would be like to go about life in a more sustainable way. And through these experiences that I'm having, I'm sharing them because I think they're insightful. Well, the insights that I'm having, I think are useful. So it's just a different kind of being useful. I think we all wanna feel useful to a certain degree, but I think one of the most useful things that we can do is take the experiences that we're having and not try and necessarily, like for me, I'm having these loads of different experiences over the last few years about understanding the mind, understanding uh, energy, understanding what it means to be a human being, what it means to create, what it means to be a creator, um, what it means to feel really deeply and be sad and grieve and be angry and be blissed out and be um, on a journey of seeking to be more, more intimately connected with other people, with myself, with and just sort of going on like the, like a soul's journey, like soul seeking, I suppose some people might call it. And that's for me, that's for me in my life. That's where my path has taken me. That's where I've, my subconscious has taken me. That's where my soul is leading me to really discover and reveal who I truly am more and more as I allow it, as I allow my life to sort of reveal itself to me rather than try and control it the whole time. And I've had a lot of really beautiful experiences over these past four years, which are not the sort of experiences that I've previously shared about like crazy waterfalls that I've traveled to or 
being famous on the internet or whatever these other travel -y experiences are, these like youtube -y experiences, these experiences are like soul experiences. And these kinds of experiences you can't really, you right? You can't really explain them. And I'm sure you've heard me try. And I don't want to explain too much. Rather, because I don't think that's useful. I think rather when I'm having an experience that, where I'm like, whoa, I'm living in a completely different reality these days because my mind is different, because my thoughts are different and my beliefs are different and who I think I am is different in relation to reality, in relation to you, in relation to everything. I'm different, therefore my relationships to my whole human experience is different. And I'm like, I'm so much more peaceful than I used to be. I used to be so anxious. I used to feel like I really had to perform and pretend that I was okay the whole time and pretend that I was like super positive and there was a lot of inauthentic expression and I didn't know any better. I was just doing my best to like, stay positive, bro. Like, what have I got to complain about? I've got such a beautiful life. Like, just keep staying positive. And everybody online was like, we love how positive you are. And I was like, I better just keep being positive then. <laughs> and so I missed out on the beauty of being sad and the beauty of like exploring those more deep and frightening and contracted emotional experiences that are very natural, a part of being a human being. And I had to kind of discover them for myself because in the society that we're in currently, we're kind of, that kind of stuff is like shamed in a certain way. It's like, how dare you feel sad? But without wanting to over explain my experience of that, I think what's useful and what's valuable Come on guys, let's go this way. Alf dog. I think what's useful is not for me to explain it, but to offer you an insight. This is the point of this video. Is that now I'm gonna be trying to rather offer you an insight because my experience of reality and my experience of, this is just my experience. How, I can't even, I can't even begin to imagine how different your experience might be of the world, of reality, of being a human being. I'm sure there are similarities that we can meet at. But rather than try and explain how things should or shouldn't be for you, or what's right or wrong for you, I think it's far more useful for me to offer an insight and so I'm saying all of that to say that here is what I think is most useful for me to talk about right now. Here's an insight for you. Being a human being isn't all about being happy the whole time. And happiness is not peace. Actually, peace is acceptance. Peace is like not saying whether something is wrong, really. Being at peace with something is accepting it fully. And I think, from my experience, all the times that I've got sad about things, or angry, or physically unwell, or ex experience like depression and anxiety around something, if, I, I'm, if I'm in that kind of season of my life, it's almost always because I'm resisting the ebbs and the flows of life and I'm trying to make things the way I think they should be. And I'm trying to force things. And that creates friction, it creates resistance because I'm not just going with the flow and then actually yeah, I'm feeling like sad, or I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling like hopeless. I'm feeling like, I don't know who the fuck I am, or where I am, or what I'm supposed to be doing. And that feels uncomfortable in a society that just projects this like 
false sort of ideal of knowing exactly what your career path is meant to be and sticking to one thing and you should have all your shit together the whole time and so like it's really easy for a psyche for our minds to like trying to navigate this human experience it's really easy to get caught up and think that something's wrong and then we create tension and we try and force it to be right and we actually prolong the suffering that we're experiencing by not just okay fine I'll be sad okay fine and the way it shows up for me when I can I can notice when I'm starting to um try and force things to be the way I want them to be and I'm actually resisting feeling sad or feeling anger or feeling grief um, is usually when my addictions come up so I'll spend more time on my phone because that like numbs me into like a passive state where I don't have to feel the tension that's building up within me that's like ah oh, fuck something needs to change and if I allow myself, I just put my phone down and I feel that tension. I'm like, fuck, this is really uncomfortable right now. If I don't have a beer and I don't smoke weed and I don't have a, I don't smoke a cigarette and I don't watch Netflix and I don't do all of the tactics that are helping me to um, cope with the discomfort of existence, and I actually sit in the presence of the discomfort of being a human being, that's when I get to the boiling point and it bursts over and then I feel, I actually fully feel the emotion that's been trying to come through me for maybe weeks, maybe months, maybe years, maybe for your whole life, there's been that emotion that's been trying to come through. And this is where at, like people would get really, really addicted to things I mean, we all get addicted to things in various capacities, right? Like, can you honestly tell me that you could go for a month without being on your mobile phone and not feel any kind of, oh, fuck, I really want to check Instagram, you know? Or, because I can't do that. I haven't even tried, really. We all have our, have our addictions. So then you compare that to, like, the extreme end, the extremely unhealthy end where someone is maybe, like can't take a break from drinking alcohol for example that is incredibly destructive to the health of your physical body your mind and destructive to the environment that you're living in and the people that are in your environment which is why we tend to isolate when we think that we're doing more harm than we are good when we don't feel useful when we feel like we're the problem when we feel like we're toxic somehow we tend to isolate away from people to like just go and like self-destruct on our own sometimes that's extreme and really underneath all of that is just a lack of acceptance and a lack of allowance to feel the emotions that really want to be felt smoking is associated with the lungs which is associated with grieving if there's someone that's passed or if you're grieving a dream that didn't work out for you you can grieve anything you got to let grieving is just the process of letting something go letting a relationship grow, go letting the dream that you created that was going to bring you so much happiness with this one person and now that person's gone that's a grievance it's not just when someone dies or a, or a pet dies you know it's not just about um, a physical death but it's like a metaphorical death as well a metaphorical death of yeah like a dream that you this was this is the thing that was going to make me happy and now it's been taken away and now i have to grieve that dream so what i'm saying is when we this is my insight <laughs> that I'm also over explaining in this video, but I'm trying, trying my best. From my experience, when I notice my addictions come up, it's the first sign that I need to actually sit and move through some emotions. And then when I move through those emotions, it's the same story every single time. It's uncomfortable and I have to go through a process of releasing control and surrendering to it so that the energy actually moves through me 
And then at the same time, I actually have to make a concerted effort to not make up loads of stories about why I'm sad or why they're, and just, just fucking feel it. Just feel the thing that wants to be felt and the process is healing, it's cathartic, it brings us back into the present moment. There's no one there. There's no one there. It brings us back into the present moment. And the present moment, here's another insight, is the only place that actually exists. When we're anxious about something, it's because we're worrying about the future. And when we're like feeling heavy and depressed about something, it's because we're concerned about something in the past that we can't change. So when we grieve the past and let go of control of the future, through whatever the emotional alchemy is, the process that needs to be taking place in that, it then is the portal to back into this present moment, which is the only place that actually exists. And the present moment is the only place where we can actually feel truly at peace. We don't feel peaceful in the future because we're living in our head. Whenever we're dreaming up something or in the future, we're in our imagination and it can go one way or another. If we're not careful, we have to be careful about what kind of thoughts that we're bringing in and what the emotional experiences that we're having that's associated with those thoughts of either like fear of the future or excitement for the future. Which one are we creating? Which one are we pulling towards us and magnetizing towards us? <laughs> I've had one of those days today where I've been like feeling pretty shit. Just woke up feeling shit. No reason for it. Then I went for a run and then I did my yoga and I did my breath work and I did my cold shower and all of those things definitely helped, but they didn't like help. They didn't like get rid of this feeling of heaviness within me. And so this afternoon I just kind of sat with this heaviness and I didn't really even need to have a cry. I didn't really need to move through any emotions. I just kind of just need to sit with it and be like, I accept that I can't be happy all the time and that today I'm just feeling sad and that's okay with me. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take the dogs for a little walk around the hill and within 15 minutes, I feel not joyous and happy, but at a place where I'm not sad. And so I'm reminding myself and anybody else who needs this reminder that that's just the cycle of life. That's how we can't expect to be blissing out and happy the whole time. It doesn't work like that. It'd be weird. But to not get caught in a downward spiral and get into these depressive seasons and states is a case of us actually letting go of control and not trying to hold on to a particular feeling of happiness just it comes and it goes it comes and it goes the sadness comes and then you feel it and then it goes again but as if the sadness comes and we're holding on to happiness anxiety builds and there's a you're feeling one thing inside but you're like pretending to everybody that you're okay on the outside and the disharmony between those two things is what causes anxiety it's like an inauthentic expression yeah, I'm fine, everything's, no, I'm, yeah, I'm good, having a great day, yeah, yeah, whereas inside you're like, I'm fucking sad, I'm lonely, I'm angry, I'm confused, I don't know who I am. On the outside you're like, yeah, no, I'm great, man, yeah, having a great, happy new year and all that. The disharmony, disharmony between that is, is what causes a lot of anxiety and that was what was causing me a lot of anxiety over the years as I was making these videos being like, what up everybody, welcome to the... And I got so good at convincing myself that I was happy and my audience that I was happy that when I realized that when I realized that I actually was really upset, it was such a shock, not upset. I was depressed, I was anxious and a little bit suicidal. Shock, not just to my audience, but to me. I was like, what? Because I'd done such a good job of convincing myself that I was okay and ignoring really what was going on. And as, I, as my expression of who I wanted to be was becoming so distant from who I actually was feeling like I was on the inside, that gap grew and grew and grew and grew and grew to the point where I was completely fragmented as a soul. I was fragmented as a human being. I wasn't myself at all. It was fucking uncomfortable. I got very sick and my body wasn't happy, I got addicted to all sorts 
and my relationships all broke down. I wasn't able to be present with people. I wasn't able to communicate properly. Like I was so ungrounded and spaced out because of this huge gap between how I actually felt and what I was actually allowing myself to come to terms with. So the first port of call with any of this kind of work and something that I keep coming back to time and time again is to get honest with yourself. Get really honest with yourself. And this is what I help people with when I'm coaching. Get super honest with yourself. Make two lists. Make the first list and say, look, this is the way I talk to myself that I know is, is bad for my mental health and makes me feel like a shit person. And these are all the things that I could be saying to myself and thinking to myself that are much more kind and compassionate rather than judgmental. And then you can also make another list that's like, here's all the things that I'm, I'm doing in my life that I know I shouldn't be doing that are causing me to have lower energy and are causing me uh, increasing my anxiety because I'm like um, comparing myself or they're decreasing my energy because it's bad for my health. And then I, these are the things that I know I should stop doing. And this is a whole list of things that I know that I should start doing, which increase my energy, increase my vitality, expand my awareness and get me excited for the journey of life whereby I know that I'm going to have to change and transform and constantly reevaluate who I think I am so that I can become more and more of who I actually am and get excited for that journey rather than be scared of it. Now we're going way into the 20 minute mark here, but yeah, I just want to reassure you from my heart to yours that wherever you are in your journey right now is where you're meant to be and discomfort, that resistance that you're feeling, is trying to tell you something. It's teaching you something. That, that the suffering is what teaches us more than anything else. So if you feel like you need support with anything like this, any kind of transformation, I help, I help people kick their habits. I help people let go of old self-destructive ways of thinking and behaving and incorporate over time the easiest method to creating new habits that are actually really healthy and can help create a foundation for yourself where that you can build on and experience more happiness and more bliss and more joy but not to avoid all the sadness the whole thing is part of the package of being a human being but there are easy ways with support of getting to the places that we want to be in terms of like inner peace and contentment with who we are and our lives and all the changes that might need to take place and all the transformations that might need to take place in order to get to that place it's really really valuable to get some support with that so i'm here for that if you feel like you need it so i'm going to leave a little link down below in the description benjam.uk forward slash coaching and there's a little form on there and if you feel like you need support you can fill that out and I'll get back to you and we can talk about maybe working together anyway I'm going to crack on with this dog walk listening to my audio book check out my latest podcast I'll also link that in the description down below thank you for listening to this video thank you for being here with me on this journey it's so magical and wonderful and I feel like um 2023 is really going to be such an expansive year it's going to be such a transformative year and as we continue to like really bring in the experiences that we know we came here to have and that we bring in the the, the love that we know we came here to experience and um have a fucking good time here on planet earth for the short period that we're incarnated here let's crack on with it let's go i'll check you guys real soon peace <laughs>